Well, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Norwich City have lost here at Deepdale 3 1. Um, it's an empty, dark place now. And you can see there the pitch. It's not too bad, really. Not the best, but we're not going to start talking about the pitch, are we? Um, yeah, Norwich's first defeat away from home in the league since August when they lost at Sheffield United in the last minute. And a, lo a long time tonight, it looked like this might actually be Norwich's uh, joint heaviest defeat of the season. Um, going along with, of course, the Leeds uh, loss also in August. I guess those who've been watching Norwich all season have probably been expecting something like this to come along at some point. And as always, it'll be about how Norwich uh, respond to a defeat rather than the fact that it's actually happened. I, I guess a few of us were hoping that after such a tough run, and I'm probably guilty of this myself, that this would be the moment at which Norwich could really kick on. And, and um, it felt like if they did something really positive tonight, then that would be a mental um, barrier and obstacle overcome. It would say so much. Sadly, it was a game uh, too far, quite clearly, and the championship rarely works <laughs> in that way anyway. Uh, Norwich found themselves a goal behind after just two minutes from a free kick. Ben Davies heading home inside the far post. Did look a soft concession, I think, um, from the actual initial free kick. But, you know, Norwich do have a weakness in terms of set pieces. I don't think that's any secret. It's clearly not a secret. And it was a well-taken header. Krull had no chance. Um, they were then 2-0 up pretty soon afterwards in terms of a penalty conceded by Emi Buendia. Paul Gallagher took it away, or, or tucked it away, although Tim Krull did get a big hand on it. I have to say, I thought it was a penalty. It's not the first time Emi Buendia is tracked into the box and, and, and given away a silly shove. Daniel Farker was adamant it wasn't. But... Um, yeah, I haven't seen it again, but to me, I wouldn't really have any particular complaints. And at two 0 down, I mean, Norwich always look vulnerable and go uh, at the back. They they did always look like they might concede. I think Preston also hit the bar in the first half, and they were pretty poor. Now they didn't make any um, particular changes. Alex Tetti came in for for Mario Vrancic, who was injured. Um, I'm not really going to launch into that. That I, I don't think that the team selections actually had an impact because you know Kenny McLean came on in the second half, sort of midway through it, and gave the ball away a couple of times, a bit sloppy, but did some good things as well. Likewise, Tom Treiber wasn't necessarily at fault for any of the goals in the first half, and in fact, he did some really good things, won the ball back really well. So, although Tom didn't appear for the second half, I'm not sure there was much to do with that. Alex Tetty too would kind of say that Preston he was the player that Preston were, wouldn't mind uh, were, were happy to see have the ball um, it was a tricky old one for, for Alex really uh, you know difficult game maybe he just doesn't like playing playing Preston this year um, um, uh, this season so maybe that's just it but I think it's hard to pin it on, on team selections that said Norwich were second best all over the pitch in the first half generally they um they did look uh, a little bit short in terms of stamina. Now, that might not be because their own level was, was worse, but just from Preston having an extra day's rest and, and looking pretty up for it from the start. They're also a team in good form. I think that all kind of um, added together and ended up with what we got in the first half. That all said, um, and I think Alec Neal will probably agree with this, and maybe he has, um, has if Norwich score their penalty late on in the first half, uh, then things could have been very different in the second. But they didn't. Marco Stiefelman saw his penalty saved by Declan Rudge, who was excellent, outstanding all game, apart from maybe making the most of a, a shove from <laughs> from Max Ahrens very late on in the game that he didn't really need to and got a booking. They shared a booking in the scramble afterwards. But Marco Stiefelman has to put away the penalty. You know, Preston put theirs away and it's 2-0. Norwich missed theirs and you know it should be 2-1 instead it's it goes on to be 3-0 in the second half when um when brown hits a, a phenomenal volley that crashes off the crossbar and it comes to Maguire who uh, tucks away a very difficult finish himself that came basically after probably 20 minutes 30 minutes i don't know how long it seemed to go on and on of constant Norwich pressure where preston weren't really defending their own half so much as their own box um and in that time Norwich worked so many opportunities Clearances off the line, brilliant saves from Deccan Rudd. Tame Pookie just wasn't as clinical as he has been. Emi Wendia trying to work holes and lots of effort, but they just couldn't turn the ball home. And ultimately, when you look at the stats of this game, Norwich just ran riot in so many ways, yet Preston had the control. And I think they deserve a degree of credit for the way they went about it in the first half. They pressed in really good areas. They turned the ball around quickly. And actually, they always looked threatening because they had players up in support. And... Um, it was quite subtle in how they went about it, who they pressed and um, and how they turned the, the ball around quite quickly. And I think they deserve 
um, a fair amount of credit for how they've gone about winning this game. Um, once the third goal went in, that was kind of that. But Norwich did get a consolation in the 93rd minute, I think it was, from Tim and Pukki. Really well taken. His 22nd goal of the season now in all competitions. Feels like that probably was... Um, something that Norwich deserved because I, I don't think they deserved a 3-0 defeat out of this at all but you know maybe in, in the flip side of what Leeds got at Ellen Road against Norwich a few weeks ago um, this was the flip side of that of course Leeds have won tonight as have Sheffield United so the table's going to have closed up a lot it puts a lot on the game now up at um, Bolton of course on Saturday we'll be staying up here and we'll bring you loads of content between now and Saturday but uh, Norwich really need to win that game now if we're going to avoid a wobble um, but you have to give them the credit. I mean, this is, as I said, the first time they've lost away from home in the league since August. A phenomenal unbeaten run. They, it's only their third defeat in 28 matches, I think, off the top of my head again. So, you know, I think it will take a degree of, of, um, of context to process this. But, and I've always felt this, it's not necessarily the one defeat. It's what happens next. If it becomes two defeats, and admittedly, Bolton, a team really struggling, you'd expect Norwich to go there and win. They've been pretty poor, even though they beat Birmingham uh, last, uh, last night, wasn't it, in fact? So it's an, it's an intriguing game. And what Norwich have to do, they have to tighten up in a way that they don't give cheap concessions like that because the game really got away with them, uh, got away from them far too easily tonight. And had they have stayed in it for longer... I think maybe they would have got something from it, but they couldn't do it, and it always looked like that would probably be the deciding factor, as it proved. And of course, Norwich have got a lot of young players who aren't even in, haven't even got a full season professional football under their belts. So um, certainly at this level, anyway. So uh, a long way to go in terms of um, of all that. But uh, no fresh injuries from what I could tell tonight. Hopefully, I believe Tim Closer and Moritz Leitner were going to travel today. I don't know if they actually have, but they may be close to involvement at the weekend. Uh, at Bolton so we will see lots of things of course to ramble on and we'll take you through all that over the course of the next few days over at pinken.com for now rest up take it on the chin Preston you know did really well tonight fair play Norwich have had a bad day at the office um, let's hope it is a bad day at the office <laughs>